What's up everybody, my name's Andy and welcome back to Kit Guru. So today we're taking a look at another mini PC, but not just any old mini PC, we're checking out the Asus Chromebox 4, which comes in at 419 pounds and 99 pence. Now what makes this PC stand out from the other mini PC crowd is the fact that this runs Chrome OS instead of Windows 10. Today we'll be doing a first impressions video looking at the setup, how quickly it boots, app support, who this is aimed at and more. Before we continue, make sure to smash that like and subscribe button because it really does help us out. The Asus Chromebox 4 looks almost the same as any other mini PC we've reviewed recently. It's small and compact, coming in at 148.5 by 148.5 by 40 millimeters and weighing just one kilogram. There's nothing too special going on aesthetically. It has small gloss accents around the top and the bottom beveled edges. It has rounded corners and the bottom right corner slopes down to reveal the power button. On the top we have the classic Asus logo in Chrome and in the top left we have the Google Chrome logo. Underneath we have some vents and non-slip rubber feet but in the box we also have a VESA mount option as well. This is a great option for a clean setup because you can attach the Chromebox 4 to the back of your monitor for an all-in-one system essentially and this is great for businesses or a tidy home setup. We also get a 90 watt power adapter too to power the system. Before we start the setup and and begin our first impressions, let me run through our unit specifications and what I.O. it has. Specs wise, it has Chrome OS, an Intel i3-10110U, 4GB DDR4-2666 MHz SODIMM RAM times 2, so that's 8GB in total, 128GB M.2 SATA SSD, Intel Wi-Fi 6 AX201, Gigabit LAN, onboard micro controller security chip. As for the I.O. on the back, we have three USB 3.2 Gen 2 USB ports, one USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-C port with power delivery and display 1.4, two times HDMI 2.0s, one times LAN RJ45 port, one times DC in, one Kensington lock, and as for the I.O. on the front, we have two times USB 3.2 Gen 2 USBs, one audio jack, which is a combo jack for headphones and mic, and one micro SD card reader. With the two HDMI 2.0 ports and the Type-C with DisplayPort 1.4 support, the Chromebox 4 can support up to three 4K displays. Chrome OS is a lightweight operating system and an alternative to Windows 10. Essentially, it reminds me a bit of an Android tablet or even a phone operating system, but in PC form. It only has 128 gigabytes of storage because really it's meant to be used with Google's cloud service, Google Drive. You have access to the Google Play Store, which is exactly the same apps found on tablets and phones that run Android. You can't download your typical Windows 10 programs, of course. You are limited to Google services and apps like Google Docs and the apps available in the Play Store. For who this is aimed at, it makes sense and we will talk about the target audience at the end. On initial startup, we are greeted with the standard setup procedure. First, we have to sign into our Wi-Fi network, accept Google's terms and conditions, and then it will check for updates. This took around five minutes for the updates to download and install. After that, the system restarted itself. To proceed, you must sign in with a Google account, and then you will be asked to accept more of Google's terms, and you can also connect your phone if you wish. After I logged in, I turned the system off to see how quickly it would boot to the login window. It took 13 seconds to go from completely off to the login screen, which I think is pretty good, but the OS is very lightweight and it is running on a 128 gigabyte M.2 SATA SSD, so I expected a good time. Once logged in, it's a clean and simple experience. We have have a bar along the bottom with a few apps in the middle, reminiscent of an Apple Mac. Let's take a look at the settings. In the bottom right, you can see the time and Wi-Fi, along with any notifications displayed as a number. If you click here, it opens more options, showing Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, volume, and more. Clicking the cog will open the settings tab. Firstly, I resized my display size. You can change resolution, refresh rate, and orientation. Simple, but useful controls that would definitely improve user experience for certain users. For example, my elderly grandparents may want to be zoomed in, whereas my nephew may want more screen space, for example. You also have simple mouse and keyboard settings under the device tab. If you go to storage management, you can also see that the system is using 26.4 gigabytes 
of the 128 gigabyte drive, leaving approximately 100 gigabytes free. Clicking my files shows the downloads folder, Play Store files, and Google Drive too. Overall, there really aren't that many options within the settings window, but what I did find surprising was the fact that you can change the preferred search engine from Google to Bing or Yahoo, for example. I imagined you would be forced into using Google, but seeing the option to use others is great for the user, at least. First experiences are pretty good, but I am surprised there weren't any hints to show you that settings and power are found in the bottom right. For first time users, either elderly or younger, this may be slightly confusing. Other than that, I'd like how clean the desktop is and everything seems a lot less cluttered than on Windows. Google Chrome is pretty much the home of the Chrome OS. Whilst using Wi-Fi, I opened up around 12 tabs. The system has eight gigabytes DDR4 RAM, so I expected it to handle this. It did handle it fine, but I noticed it wasn't as quick as I expected to load images, especially when using a Wi-Fi 6 mesh network with full strength signal. The node is only around three meters away, and the Chromebox 4 has Wi-Fi 6 support. So to test it further, I tried running a YouTube video in 4K, and it was just continuously loading. When I dropped the quality down to 1080p, it was quicker to load, but it's still not ideal. So we have Wi-Fi 6 here, and I have a Netgear Nighthawk Mesh MK63 setup, so I decided to run a speed test. And sadly, the results were incredibly disappointing. The Chromebox achieved a measly 9.71 megabytes per second download and an upload of 13.86 megabytes per second. My phone, which is connected to the same Wi-Fi 6 mesh node in the same room, achieved 112.18 megabytes per second download. I decided to plug an Ethernet cable into the Chromebox and run the test again. And this time we achieved 131.97 megabytes per second download and nearly 37 megabytes upload, which is a seriously significant improvement. So we reached out to Asus to see if this was a specific issue with the Chromebox and the Netgear mesh network. We haven't heard back as of yet, but keep an eye out in the comments section or on our website in case we have any further news regarding this issue. Once I had the ethernet cable plugged in, I tried scrubbing around a YouTube video timeline whilst having 4K selected and the performance was night and day better than when I had it connected to Wi-Fi. I also redid the tab test, opening lots of tabs and this too saw an improvement. YouTube and Chrome in general responded quickly overall. Afterwards, I tried out the Google Docs tab on the home screen, and this just loads Chrome again, but it opens up Google Documents. It worked fine without any issues, and overall it was snappy, and it was a good experience. Opening up the Play Store is where you can find more apps to download and install, but as mentioned before, these are essentially tablet and phone apps. So I tried to see how some light gaming would go, but for some reason, Call of Duty Mobile doesn't show up at all when searched for, and I assume it's not compatible. Maybe to stop people from having an advantage using keyboard and mouse maybe? Instead I downloaded the Battle Royale PUBG, and this required a 555 megabyte download, and this took around 10 minutes or more before it was ready to actually play. What I did like was that opening it up, it opened in full screen mode instead of a small window. I do have to say that the experience wasn't that great. The controls are the same as on a tablet or a phone, so you must click and drag on the screen in specific areas to turn the camera or to activate certain actions. On a 27 inch 1440p screen, it really didn't look that good either. But honestly, I wasn't expecting a phone optimized game to play excellently. It's playable with some patience if you really needed to play though. I also loaded up Crash Bandicoot on the run. This game loaded a small window as if being played on a phone, but the experience was actually very enjoyable. It loaded well and it ran smoothly. Apps like Netflix and Spotify are optimized for the Chromebox 2 opening in full screen, which was nice to see. Lastly, I wanted to test how the Chromebox would handle some light photo editing. So I downloaded Lightroom and opened it up. You can use it in a phone's aspect ratio or you can click full screen. So luckily it doesn't stretch when in full screen mode and this is 100% the way you want to use this app. Photos did look a little pixelated to me in comparison to the real desktop Lightroom software, 
but it wasn't too bad. Messing with the sliders and making adjustments was just a little slower to react than I'd have liked, and changes were delayed by about a second, I would say. But this was totally usable, and overall it did work well. I decided to open up the Chrome box to see if it'd be possible to change the RAM or drive yourself, as I wasn't sure if it was possible or not. Opening up the Chrome box shows the SoDim RAM is easily accessed and removed, as is the SSD, which is found underneath the Wi-Fi module. Overall, I think the Chromebox 4 is aimed mainly at first-time PC users, younger children for their first experience of computers maybe, and the same can be said for the older generations without any experience too. It's incredibly easy to use, and there really isn't anything you can do that could cause issues with your user experience, unlike on Windows 10 for example. The Chromebox 4 would be an excellent choice for schools, colleges, or just anyone that wants to do some light browsing or light work. You're not going to be gaming or doing any heavy lifting video editing, but honestly, this product is not aimed at any of that anyway, and it doesn't claim to do so. The Intel i3 10110U paired with that 8GB DDR4 RAM and the 128GB M.2 SATA SSD definitely aided in a relatively smooth experience with quick cold boot startup times. The only thing letting it down majorly was my experience with the Wi-Fi 6 connection. However, this may just be an issue that can be fixed we are waiting to hear back. Your mileage may vary. Once connected to the internet via an ethernet cable, everything worked perfectly. And as a whole, the entire experience was quite enjoyable once I put myself into the target audience's shoes. Would I buy one? Absolutely not, but I would consider recommending one to my grandparents, for example. So what do you guys think of the Chromebox? Will you be getting one or will you be getting one for your family maybe? Let us know down below. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button, hit subscribe, check out our merch down below and check out our website daily for tech news. I'm Andy, this is KitGuru, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.